Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this video. So my name is Elroni and today I'm going to teach you that how we can make uh, rock paper scissors a game in C++. So this video is going to be total beginner friendly. I'm not going to teach something like that that will go over your mind. No, this is total beginner front friendly and this is a good project uh, if you're just getting started with the... Uh, what, let me just first say this one. If you're just getting started with the C++ so you will just understand the basics and you will understand something like that. So first of all, I'm going to make a folder. I, I made a folder. Now I'm going to open my Visual Studio Code. You can uh, use any code, but I pre personally prefer the using the Visual Studio Code because you can use any other code editor. So personally, my personal preference is only go with the Visual Studio one. So we're going to make like uh, project uh, one underscore game. Uh, the format will be automatically saved as .cpp, so it's go like that. Let me just go zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put a default template, and the template will go like if I'm just gonna just gonna type the boiler, that will just uh, give us some run, give us some like basic things. Then this they include iostream, which will include the basic functions library, and uh, this is a must to include. And here we're gonna use the names using namespace std, which means uh, whatever we're gonna write. Like if we wanna just get any of the functions. First of all, we need to write the std double dot. Then we can write any functions that we want to use, like sc out and something like that. But you, you don't want to do this every single time you're writing a function. So for that, we're using this using namespace std. So uh, every single thing will be concluded. Like they will do every. You don't need to just like mention the location or mention the name of the function. You just need to just type that function, and it will just get yeah, like getting started. So this is our main integer function, or as you might already know that. So what we're gonna do? Uh, first of all, we're gonna create some global variables. You might have already heard about the global variables, so we're gonna just create that. And the first of all, I'm gonna create the int. First, let's say I'm gonna create a string, uh, player name, and uh, I'm gonna create another string uh, with a common sign. Let me just put a semicolon, semicolon here. And then the string is gonna be like uh, the PC. And what's the string? Con what will this string contain? It will contain some of the like uh, variables, some of the text uh, for. Let's do. Alright, it will contain the rock paper scissors for the PC, so we're gonna just randomize the process anyways. Let's say rock, paper, and uh scissor. So we're gonna access this using the 0, 1, and 2 uh index integers. So we're gonna we see I created a player uh, player name uh variable and uh, I created an array of uh, play PC. So then well, I'm gonna create some integers. So first integer will be like uh when we get started in the game, they should ask us like probably Let's say I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna make this game as simple as possible. Like you can just get start in game and make this game more complicated by adding rounds, adding game trials, adding something like that. So I'm gonna make it simple. Let's say uh PC, let's say PS, which means play, uh, uh let's say CS, which means computer score, and the PS means uh person score, and uh, uh let's add another function here. Let's say it's like trial, and another one. Uh, user value and the uh, computer value. So the user value is gonna be whatever input we're gonna give it the to the uh, like computer to the game. Like we wanna select a rock or uh, whatever. And the computer value will be the whatever the value computer will select by itself. So we're gonna make something like that. So also I wanna mention that we need to include some libraries, some more libraries. First library will be the time dot edge, and the second library will be the uh, colo neo. What was that? There you go. Know. C C C C C. Let me just quickly just check that I sometimes forget the name. One minute, so that would be quick. Uh, that was like Conio dot edge. So the Conio dot edge we're including is just for one function that we're gonna use. It is the get so D D C edge. So this is not important. You can just leave this thing. Uh, let's say this is is uh, not uh, important. So hope you already enjoyed this video and uh, let's get forward. So once you have created those global variables, what we, what do we want to do? We want to first of all, let's say once the process gets started, we want to just like see out to the user, like print to the user. We want to play say welcome to rock paper and a uh, scissor game. And after just something like rock, welcome to rock paper scissor game. What you can do in the trial session, there will be like how many times the game should be repeated. So you can just put it manually, you can just put some um, like value here is equal to 3. But another thing that we can do, 
that will make your game look more interactive. Uh, if I want to say about in, uh, like the interactiveness, you can literally just spend uh, one day on make this game, and I will just tell you this will be the best game you know for your life. If you just give it some time, alright? This has some uh, random, add some gangster functions to this. <laughs> I promise to you, it will be just so bad. So, now bad, it will be so good, great. So, let's say for the basicness, I'm, what I'm gonna do here. Uh, welcome to this game. And then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna grab the user's name. And uh, after this, welcome to this, I'm gonna put a end line. Oh, you can do another thing that will be ENDL, that will also give it the same. Thing, you know, uh, enter your name, then uh, an end space, and then we're gonna go like our name equals to that. Now we're gonna grab the name from the user using the CIN function. So we're gonna get like P and the person name. This will be the name will be taken as a string that we already mentioned. But if you if you're making a game in C language, that's a lot of different things. Not not I'm gonna say a lot. And we all need to change the you know, string to character star because you know it doesn't have this value and it also doesn't have this have these C out options. Um, my according to my preferences, C like C plus plus is a good language. Uh, in case of the advancedness and the things it has, I'm gonna say try. I'm gonna say this is a really clean language and we're gonna go with that. So after getting the name from the user, I'm gonna add a function which will that will be that. System CLS. So what this option will do? It will just clear this, you know, like a uh, uh, console, like you have might have seen already. Like once we once our enter the when the once the user enters the name, the screen will be cleared and it will be cleaned. And uh, and what would uh, text we're gonna put here and what our options are, like functions we're gonna just put here, they will be displayed on the next screen, uh, like on the clean under uh, uh, terminal one. So you can just check this out. Let me first of all go like. See how I don't know. Let me just show you a real example. So we're gonna run this in here in the in build run module. So enter your name. I'm gonna say I'll run it. So if I hit, hit enter, so you can see after hitting the enter, this the screen was cleared and the text was displayed on the next screen. And this is really better for me if you're making a game uh, because it will be, just make your game more interactive. It will not just mess it up everything on the way, on the way, on the way. You know, we got the system CLS. Look, we got the person's name, which is the PN. Now, what we want to do, you can just grab the person's trial. You can just try get the, how many trials you want. But by default, like we're gonna say, we have three trials by default. Like we don't want to grab the thing from the user or something like that. And after getting that thing, we want to start the for loop. So, uh, you can just click enter here, and the for loop will start automatically. But I'm gonna, I want to man, I want to like stay, just like I uh, teach you every single thing. So I don't want to do that stuff. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna say integer i equals to zero. We're gonna create an integer that will be uh, named as i, and the value of the i integer is equal to zero. And once we um, specify that, what we wanna do, we wanna just like uh, give some condition, like uh, what should the the i, I equal is to what should be the condition that for the follow to continue to. You can also create a while loop, but I'm gonna prefer to go with the follow loop because in this case we want follow loop. So we're gonna say like until if I uh, i is smaller than uh, the value of trial which is 3 until i is smaller than 3 the loop should be arrested you should run the loop again and again and uh, you might have seen in the trial so you might, if you're just gonna go with the default one it will also mention you another thing that will be like i plus plus which means the i value should be plus to increase by 1 if you just go like a I plus one and or I plus plus, that's the same thing. But you don't want, you don't need to mention this thing here because it will just increase the I value on the start, on the go. And you don't want to do this. We're gonna just manually just show this value at the end of the thing. Let me just clear that out. And once we're in the loop, what we wanna do? First of all, we're gonna say we wanna just like make it more better. We're gonna go like C out P and which means player name. Uh, I'll learn in the when go like a uh, welcome to round and the uh, round will be specified as I value round one EMVL. So, what we just did here, they will just print your name, whatever your name is. I'm gonna say welcome to the round and I, and by default, I should be zero. So, we need to make sure it is I plus one. 
so they will show you welcome to round one and uh, they will show you a uh, welcome to round two when the loop is started again so once we do that welcoming thing uh let's do another thing let's make it much better so we're gonna go like that. add two e and the l's yeah that should work fine and after this we want to just just print out uh enter and here is the thing here's a catch so we have options we can do otherwise either you can just make the user enter a string you can just make him like enter just like enter rock uh to select rock and that will be like a little bit disturbing for the user to just like you don't want you don't want to just type rock uh, all the way to all the way rock and uh, then the function will work that will be a little bit crappy or you can do what you can just put uh, just type r and that should work fine uh, you can do a, another thing that we would like just type some integers 1 for rock, 2 for paper, and 3 for uh, the scissor. So you got choices in here and you got to decide what you got to do because we have no problems creating functions for anything like string, character, or uh, integer. We have no problems. So in our case, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with R, so which means it will become a character probably. So here the UV should be placed replace from that oh no uh, let me say no i don't want to do that because this, this course this video is for beginners so i don't want to make this uh, video a little bit complicated by adding the con character thing so let me say let's go with the in answer one uh enter one uh for rock let's copy this text because we don't want to this thing make it all the way there Enter uh, two for paper. Or oh, stick with this copy the wrong thing. Enter three of uh, Caesar. Enter three for Caesar. And after that, we're gonna go like E and D L. And uh, the one E and DL which will be give us give us some gap, and another E and DL that will give us another gap. That's perfect. Then we're gonna go like a type here, just to let user know that he's typing right now. And we're gonna grab the value from the user eventually, and you know we're gonna grab the user value, and uh, every single thing, uh, whatever we did here, will be stored in the variable of uh, UV, which is user value. So. This is pretty easy. Alright. So after grabbing the value from the user, like whatever value we want here, like we want the rock or whatever, you know, you can just literally do anything you want. So after getting the thing. Alright, let me mention Yeah, that's that's perfect. So what we want to do right now is just like uh, get the same value for the uh oh, let's say get the same value for the computer. So I'm gonna go like uh, say C out computers turn and uh, end line and before this one I just write system CLS and uh, just clean the system clear the screen and then we only can use system CLS once uh, a while in the loop like only one time in the loop because I uh, tried uh, if you're just gonna just try to uh, place the system CLS another time in the loop, and the other texts, the other phone, the other texts or functions you want to run after the system CLS won't work anymore. So that's the problem of this. Uh, you know, that's the con of uh, system CLS using system CLS two times in a loop. So for now, we're just uh, good to go with the computer turn. Uh, we're gonna say like, oh, I mentioned yeah, C out computer's turn. Now we're gonna say C out. Uh, computer selected and what computer is selected? Let us uh, make a randomizing thing here, and uh, we also need to add another integer, which will be probably now we already have the integer CVs, which is continuing the computer value. So, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just go like first of all, srand, and the srand uh, is the function. That uh, runs runs first of all. That runs the randomizing function, and it will just like the it will just set the time. Let's put this now, and I'm gonna explain this thing to you. So what we actually did here, 
srand is like a function. This is start the uh, the randomizing function. And uh, what's the time and uh, you know, do do here? It means whenever we run one the random function one time, once then we uh, if we run the function another time, we should get different results. We should not get uh, same results. Uh, what you can do, you can just mention some time here, like how much time for how much time the results should be like same. Now uh, it could be like uh, if you're just gonna you know, put in some random thing here, the like the randomizing thing would not be changed. The whatever the variable randomly we're getting, getting we will get that whole till the whole time the function till the whole time the uh, program is running. So that will not be really satisfying for us. So we want to make it null just to make sure we get a randomizing result every single time the function is called. So now we're gonna go like cv is equal to. Now here I'm gonna say rand. And the function, this is a rand function, just leave it. Just don't uh, think what's gonna do inside this is like rand function. All we do is like percentage three. What does this mean? The percentage uh, specifies like how many uh, person, how many like uh, how many numbers you want from the uh, random uh, function, rand function. In the Python, this is a little bit like more better. Um, if I'm gonna talk about the functions things, like you, it's more explainable in Python because that's because in the Python we're gonna like do like random dot random and then I I don't quite remember that was like a random dot random uh, no actually that was like random dot uh, I guess that was randit yeah it's something like that randit dot random and it was it was really better so what we actually did in that we mentioned two with two the points we mentioned the first point once to uh, that would be the lowest uh, point to just print to just like uh, this you know, to just like a uh, random to just start the random uh, pointer form and the last one like you will get any uh, random number between the f zero and a hundred value. So it's quite like that. You will get the value from zero to three. Not actually three. It will just this. It will not conclude three. It will just conclude it as two. It will just give you any any random thing between zero and two. So I mean just between zero and three, ex excluding the number three. So we have given the value CB to the CB value any random thing three things. So we will get our listed here. List it because we only have three elements, which means zero, one, and two to access the uh, array element. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna go like computer selected, and what the computer selected, he selected uh, PC and the uh, CV, the computer value. What are we this inside? So we're gonna just put a P e end of line. All right, we're giving a little closer. So now let me increase my speed a little bit. I'm getting going so. Uh, slowly, this video might just run for a whole hour. If I'm gonna just continue the speed I'm, I'm on right now, so yeah, let me just go a little bit more faster so we both can cooperate together. So now, once we just uh go like uh computer selected this thing, and now what we're gonna do actually here, and we're gonna create another, we're gonna create a function outside the integer main function. We're gonna just make it like uh actually you we don't wanna return anything from the function. Let me, just think, let me just think what we want to just create. We want to create a function that will check whatever the values. We want to create a void function. Why the decide function actually? So what this function should get our it should get some random integer, which will be like we're gonna name the integer as a. We're gonna give it the value of uh, uv. Yep. I wanna check that. And uh, here we're gonna do what we're gonna create a switch statement. Uh, switch a. Uh, let's take the user. Yep. If a e case is equal to one, if the user put one, then we're gonna go like uh, if if cv is equal to zero, if the computer value is equal to zero, what we're gonna do here, which means the computer has uh, selected the thing. Oh, let me just put here one other thing. The computer score and uh, player score is uh, set to zero by default, so we won't get any problems. In the, yeah. If computer score is equal to zero and the player's player score is also equal to zero one, which means they both have selected rock, so then when I when I uh, want to see out, draw, and the uh, computer score uh, equals to plus one, it will increase the computer score gradually. So that goes like for our first if statement. You can make it more like you can just give it some bad, good, uh, you know, some good texts like uh, what happened, why it happened. I'm gonna say like if the computer score is equal to one, which means I select the paper, lost, 
Oh, so a draw, no one wants anything. And if, if I lost, a computer wants one point. And if I win, I get one point. And then the function breaks. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna not the function. The switch statement breaks. The case one breaks, and then we're gonna start uh, three cases like that. We're gonna make three cases. Let's just quickly specify them. Uh, the case two. If I select two, if I select it, if I put number three, if uh, CBB is, uh, CBB, if the computer value is equal to this, we're gonna win. And once we win, we're gonna go like. Player score is equal to plus one. And there is equal to one, which means the computer and I are the same. I can say like draw and no one wins. Computer score is equal to three. I'm gonna say two. And what's gonna happen? I'm gonna lose and the uh, computer is gonna win. So if this is equal to zero. If I have selected the scissor and the computer has selected the rock, I'm gonna lose and the computer is gonna win. Uh, computer is gonna get a point. Computer is equal to one. Then, then what's gonna happen? I'm gonna win because I have the scissor and I, I can cut the paper if a uh, computer is equal to this. We're gonna get a draw match and nothing is gonna happen. So the statement will break here. Default break. You can put something in here. You can put like a C out. Unknown. Uh, come on. And a semicolon. Well, that's quite it. Let's, let's put this function here. Now we're gonna mention the function here. We're gonna go like a. This side function and it should get the value of uh, probably which is UV. Yeah, so we got this function done, and after getting the deciding function, like once we know what's the define deciding value, we should run another value. Let me just close this one. All right. Oh, that's much better. So once we decide that, we want to create another function here. Uh, why the uh, Win. It should get nothing. It should just give us something. We're gonna put some if statements here. If, uh, if uh, player score is greater than computer score, then uh, you wanna say like, see out. You won the game, and uh, I won the game. That's quite it. Go like uh, else if else if the player score is uh, smaller than the computer score, we lost the game. No one won the game. If player score is equal to computer score, then nothing should happen. No one should win, no one should lose, so that's how it goes. Else, if, and, uh, yep, that's quite it. Created a function win, and uh, we created that. And we can create another another function. So, first of all, let's only create those functions here. Yeah, uh, so another thing I want to mention. We want to run the win function outside the for loop because that will be decided once the loop is ended. So it's really much better. Let's see if we have a function. If our game is working, enter name Aldroni. So all right, one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors, two. Computer student, computer select the paper, and draw Aldroni. All right, we got draw. So I need to work on that a little bit more. We can go here. Uh, what we can do here, we can just go like. We can do another thing. I'm gonna say like uh, see out, see out this thing. I can't. Well, I didn't know about that. Oh, sorry, I'm not returning anything. This is not a 
This is a white function, this is an integer function. So for probably fixing this thing, what we wanna do here? Computers like this something. Let's put another gap here after the computer, whatever the computer has selected. Welcome to round one. Welcome to round one, then that goes like that. Uh, EMDL, welcome to round one. One EMDL. And uh, like that. And another EMDL, so. So you might probably guess why this they're showing you know, the round one because we didn't added the one to the i value anyway. So let's save this. Then let's run it again. Eldoni, welcome to round one. Oh, we get it. Got a little bit more. So you can run from there. On the function on the game, Eldoni. Eldoni, welcome to round one. All right, so you should not probably get this gap here. Uh, but what you need to do, you need to just go like manually, just put some uh, and spaces after the losses. I don't have that much time, so we'll like I'm gonna select a rock. Win. I want this round. Welcome to round two. I'm gonna select the paper. I want the rock one two because. I got the paper and the computer got the rock, so I won. Right, one, two. That's it. Two lost. No one won. So uh, I, I actually lost that uh, round because he has like the Caesar and I like the paper, so uh, that means I lost the round. No one won the game. Let me just see that. No one won the game. Bah. All right. Let's see out. EMDL, so that will just make it much better. Let's run it again. And this is one of the last one. Let me show you how it's going. Enter your name. Done. What do you want to select? I want to select the rock. When computers like the Caesar, you select the rock and you broke the rock. Caesar. Alright, so let me select paper. Last computers like the Caesar and you selected paper. Are you okay? Crazy. Alright, let me just select Caesar this time. Oh, right. yep, you won. Computer select the paper and you select the scissors, so you cut the paper. So, guys, that's quite it for this uh, tutorial. So, let me just give you some uh, more things, some uh, like uh, more tasks you can do by yourself. So, you can go like uh, add uh, rounds and uh, custom trials option, which means that you will get the rounds and uh, trials from the user. You will just start two loops. Two for loops. First for loop will be the rounds, the how many games you want to play, and then number two will be the how many trials you wanna you wanna have. And then after getting those, this thing, you can just like add uh, more details to wins and uh, losses. So you can add more details like who won, how we won, what he did. Just like as some crazy this stuff. Like he just punched his uh, egg. He just punched his paper, and he just punched his rock and that. That thing happens. All we can do what you can just uh, like add uh, add some arrays here. You can uh, give us some random values, and you can just show random dialogues to the user at random times. So that would be much better. So you can just literally do any so many things in here. Uh, you can just make it like more make more functions. Like just stop uh, doing those things because it li li little bit just craps it up. So you can just convert every single thing to functions and just like close this function like that. It will make it look more simple. And you can just also add the another thing. I was Wanting to add myself, but I, I don't have so much time. So, uh, uh, sh show uh, how many points user and the uh, computer have after every round, and uh, also once you once the game uh, completes so these are some of the tasks that I'm gonna say personally prefer you to like first of all just go through them and if you have some more ideas you can just add them into the game but you can show the points like how many points a user have how many points the computer have uh, or you can also show that like how many draw games you have already played and uh, 
Yeah, he can just literally do any single thing. He can control that how many trials the player can go with the like how many should be and using if statement and how many for the also same for the rounds. And uh, yeah, that's quite it. So that was our game, and I hope you like this video. If you do, hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you in the future.